I got a question for you, Dan, as you patronize my guy, Stu Gotts, who has the obviously correct take. Thank you. Do you like action movies? Are yes. you a fan of any of them? Yeah, I like them, but not, uh, you know, not many of them. Right, I, I understand. You're more of a, you know, deeper thought, no country for old men type of thing. I get it. But like Die Hard, you enjoyed it, right? Yes. You know why Die Hard was great? Because it was one Bruce Willis against 12 terrorists. Boom. You know what action movie sucks? If there's four Bruce Willis, two terrorists, and it's like, well, he's supposed to do that. And, and that people learn to see their heroes as underdogs. That is one of the things we like. So seeing a loss creates a greater sense of awe, fulfillment, and astonishment for many than when it's like, well, he's got three of the four best players on the court. So of course they won. So, yeah, this is similar to, for a lot of people, LeBron's 2015 finals loss with Mozgov and Delhi was more impressive than his 2012 or 13 finals victories in Miami. Like, it's not a bad take. It's actually the right take, and I doff my proverbial cap to Stu Gatz. Well, thank you, Nick. So, Nick, would you say a super team would be like the Expendables in this situation? It's not just the Expendables. Aren't those superhero movies, the Justice League stuff? Like, don't superheroes get together all the time? And we love those action movies. The Fast and the Furious doesn't have a bunch of people that are huge stars. Careful. Listen, I'm not familiar with the Fast and the Furious <laughs> franchise. Um, but here's the thing about the superhero movies you mentioned. That's make-believe. We're diehard. It's oh, real right. people. Buddy. So action right. movies you're talking yes. about are real. Okay, that's yeah. right. Jason yes. Bourne that's against right. a lot of people. Right. Bruce Willis uh, or John McClane against a lot of people. John Wick against a lot of people and horses. This is it's a simple formula that Durant fell into, and now it's like, wow, look at what he did. That's amazing. It was great, which is why, like the guy went over six in overtime and airballed the game winning shot nobody's going to criticize him because it's like, we get it. We understand you did everything you could have done. You played a brilliant basketball game. And now if he had zero rings, then obviously it would be looked at differently, but he's already checked. You're just like in, in life or in sports. I, you know what? I'm going to use an uncomfortable analogy, but let's do it. Dan, you'd accomplished almost everything professionally except for this. So you wanted to check off this box. It's like, okay, I won all the newspaper awards, had a great radio show, had a great television show. I've done all this with corporate backing. What about what's the box left to check? Well, let me try to do something on my own. Forgive us, your internet connection well is a little said, bit though, spotty. I mean, what I would say to you and to everybody as we're talking about this is, and I don't know how it is you guys extend your respect for others. I have never questioned the greatness of Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant isn't any greater to me today than he has been at any point in terms of how great he is at basketball. He did not show me anything that I did not think that he was capable of. He's one of the greatest scorers ever. He makes it look easier than anyone I've ever seen play the sport. And it doesn't matter to me whether he's got four superstars or one superstar. He's still one of the best players ever. It doesn't change the measurement or the respect for me one iota. But when you're one of the, well, Dan, first off, you did see him do something he rarely does, which is carry Jeff Green around, which is carry Blake Griffin and Stugatz, aging Blake Griffin around. The only reason I have seen it is because he played with Russell Westbrook and he's always played with stars before this necessitated him being someone who scored more but he's every bit as great as I thought he was there's no distinction for me there's no difference for me I'm not I'm not surprised that Kevin Durant can score against anybody the man averages 30 points a game but what Nick and I are saying is when you have that kind of talent Dan, superior talent all-time talent you don't need help you don't need recruits you don't well, need to go seeking a championship like John McClain was fine on his own. Can you imagine if he called in John Wick and Marion Cobretti? I mean, think about it. Well, let me ask you this. D Dan, I'm not surprised by the scoring. You weren't a little surprised in game five with the passing and in games five and seven 
with the 48 minutes and the 53 minutes? I was a little surprised. Nick, what I'm surprised by is that after that injury, he could be the same player that he was before. That after that injury, he could play those kinds of minutes. But he wasn't showing me anything that... Was he showing you something you didn't think he was capable of? Well, it's not that I didn't... I actually thought he could do it. But I didn't know it. Now we know it. Yes. Like, it's similar to what we all right i can't what am i supposed to keep doing with this as an internet connection it's the third time that this has happened what do we do can can we get it to be any better uh nick why, why don't you try uh, disconnecting from the zoom and calling back in blow on the cartridge as well okay see if that works that's how we're going to do it all right we'll try and bring nick back because it's odd that i have someone that agrees with me and here he is getting cut off i feel like uh, someone sabotaged us i, I do find it interesting that stugatz is willing when the measurement has always been rings yeah it's the measurement mm -hmm. this time the measurement is second round playoff loss <laughs> It's the, the, the definition. Stugatz just made Andy Dalton an all-time great ginger category, admittedly, by well, simply getting to the playoffs. Right. The, the measurement is wins. I didn't make him an all-time great. I mean, as you pointed you out. Top 10 redhead of all time. Well, well, go ahead. Give me nine others. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> Red Rifle. You're missing an important factor here, though, Dan. QR, quality rings. And right now, KD yes. does not have a ton of quality rings. Mm -hmm. He just has rings. Right. Right. He Meaningless rings. He doesn't have any <laughs> QR. He only has a couple of R's and no R's in Stugatz's personal record. MR's. I mean, <laughs> I'm willing to upgrade to MR's. Meaningless rings. <laughs> oh, well, is that an upgrade? I thought that that's where we already were. I didn't think that that was I'm at no rings no right now. now. Okay, you're at no <laughs> rings and you're thinking about based on, yes. a, based on a second round playoff loss, you're thinking the of The best upgrading I've ever seen him play, man. To, I saw the so fire in so, his eyes, so you man. are thinking of upgrading him to meaningless rings, which is a step short of meaningful <laughs> rings, or the highest compliment is quality rings. I just want to make sure I have these measurements yes. right. Quality rings. Jordan has six of them. Okay. He would have had eight if he, if he didn't take two years off. Okay, right. so but that is I thought that that was the measurement. I didn't right. think that Jordan got any credit whatsoever for all of those playoff losses before he got all the rings. Like Elijah Wan does not have quality rings. The only reason he raw he won those rings was because Jordan took the two years off. They're not quality rings. I mean, they're just they're go not, ahead. I'm, Nick, I'm sorry, Nick. Again, does the last right. one have any I, QRs? I, well, I listen. First, uh, yes, his first one he had no help. Stugatz. Yeah, come but, on, it's Robert Ory and it's Kenny Smith. There's no other stars there. That's one of the best rings ever. The Jordan would have won eight straight is obviously a terrible take, but I'm not gonna go. I want to be Team <laughs> Stugatz here. So it's a terrible take. It's just an outrageous take, and it doesn't stand up to the scrutiny of any history or anal analysis whatsoever. You had him slowing but down after three, huh? Okay. I it, 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 What I was trying to say before the internet stopped me from being great, and now I'm on my phone, I hope this is far better, is, Dan, did you not get a different sense of step this year than you had had previously? We have been having, Nick, this conversation since the Sacramento Kings started losing piece by piece. This When when the Sacramento Kings had Weber and Stojakovic and Bibby, do you remember how year by year they'd lose a piece and then all of a sudden Bibby was a little bit better? Stojakovic was statistically better, but the team ended up being worse. So, yes, of course, when Steph has to carry the whole thing, he statistically is better and their team stinks. Like that. He, yeah. He's great, but what happens? They're an eight seed because it happened. Nick, we just saw this happen. We saw it just happen with Paul George. Kawhi goes out. Hey, look, Paul George is better than we thought. Harden and Kyrie are not right. Oh, look, Durant is better than we thought he was. Oh, look, Devin Booker just had a triple-double first time. What was the difference? Chris Paul's out. Of course, if I give somebody who's great all the usage rate, they're going to be great and their team's going to be lesser. Okay, yes, sometimes. And sometimes guys just crumble under it. Sometimes guys just can't do it. Like the the only question left with Steph this year, we all knew that if you took Steph off the Warriors in 15 and 16 and put Russ or Harden in their place, the Warriors would have been worse. But there was a legitimate question. Was the opposite also true? If you would have put Steph on the 2017 Thunder, the team that, Russ had the average of the triple-double, won the scoring title, led to the playoffs, lost. Could he have done that? Or because he's a little smaller and not as athletic, would it not have translated? It was an unknown. We then got to see it, and it's like, oh, 
he can do everything. You seem to be confident that the, all the great players can do everything. I like to see it. With Durant, we got to see it. Nick, you'll see it every time. Kevin Love was this in Minnesota, and his team stunk. And then he goes, and he's the second or the third best player. And what happens? They end up winning a championship. Chris Bosh did this in Toronto, and his team stunk. Like, every guy in that league who is actually great, give me all the guys who haven't done it when you've seen them crumble under it. But LeBron won with Kevin Love. Like, he won an NBA championship. With, like, Kevin Durant's problem is, Dan, he gets too much help. It's like it's not enough just to have one player – he needs Draymond Green, he needs Klay Thompson, he needs Steph Curry, and then he needs James Harden and Kyrie Irving. Like, Kyrie was enough. Go in with Stuart, Kyrie. He doesn't need anybody to score 30 points a game for his entire prime. He doesn't need anybody to do that. He averages that. It's his average game is to be better at scoring than just about anyone ever, no matter who his teammates are. Like, we know this about him. So, to answer your question, I think a good example is Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving will always score, right? But will you win at all? I guess you're you're making the point is the good stats, bad team guy. I think Durant showed you this series that I know they ended up losing in overtime by a shot. But I think he showed you this series that, I mean, literally, if he wore size 17, which he does wear, that's the crazy thing from this weekend is he wears size 17 in real life and 18 in the games because it makes him feel his feet feel better. That's a real thing he talked about like three years ago. I think the Nets are the favorites to win the title right now with no Kyrie and no Harden. I didn't think that would have been the case uh, three weeks ago because I'm like, uh, as great as Durant is, can he be the playmaker? Can he play 45 minutes in the playoffs? You 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 knew it without seeing it. I I, I needed to see it. I think Stugatz needed to see it. I don't know how you're so confident of it without having seen it. I don't view sports. I've said this before, right? It's the idea. To me, it's a childish way of viewing sports that to be the child hiding behind the couch who doesn't see that his feet are out. And so someone can see their feet. And because that child believes that no one can see them, that is so. I don't need to see it to know that something is so. Like Kevin Durant is one of the best scorers ever. If I put him on any team ever, Nick, you know good and well that team's going to be relevant. Are they going to be championship good? I don't know. I still don't know if that would have been enough. It wasn't enough to beat Milwaukee. I don't know that it would have been enough to beat Phoenix or, or the Clippers. It was good enough to beat Milwaukee. Yeah, okay. I, the, I, I, nobody is denying that he's one of the greatest scorers ever. I just, I think that across sports, let me, can, let me ask one other thing. Cause I feel like I'm frustrating you and I don't mean to, especially cause I invited myself onto your show. <laughs> Are it's, you it's only, confident? it's only your internet connection. That's frustrating me. It's not your argument. And you agreeing with me. Are, are you, do you, do you feel fully confident that Mike Trout would be a great playoff performer? Yes. Okay, uh, I don't know how you can, based on what. He's based on what he's great at baseball. He's yeah, one, but he, so you don't think there's there is such a thing as a guys who in the crucible of the moment get worse in small in is. small samples there are in randomness like baseball and basketball there's very little. It's why what Ben Simmons did yesterday and in that series is so confusing. What reference points do you have for someone just totally collapsing everything they've ever been where you're looking at something and you can see that someone is scared? Yeah, there's the, it, usually in basketball the great players it doesn't happen to and Ben and Ben ate himself alive there. I just the I guess the the kid looking at his feet thing, I I understand the the point, but I think in sports we have enough examples of guys who certain guys who get better in the biggest spots, certain guys who stay the same, and certain guys who get five to ten percent worse, which is all that separates the great from the all time greats. That when we get a piece of con not speculation, concrete evidence that oh, what LeBron did in 2018 with those Cavs post Kyrie, KD could have done something similar. That's valuable for KD. And you you knew it evidently before I did. You were certain of it. I wasn't. Like I I, I did want to see it because you're, he was drafted to the team and they got Russ. He then chose the team with Steph and Clay. He then chose the team with Kyrie and then they went and got Harden. So it's not even like that we had snapshots of it. We didn't even have moments of it. Now we do. We have a, half a series of it against a great team.
Dan, he was celebrated in a way after game five and game seven in a way he's never been celebrated before. Universally, Kevin Durant was like more celebrated than him winning finals MVP and winning a championship. Oh, with the Warriors. But, I, but I believe that's an indictment of the people viewing it, not of him. I, I think his talent is so singular, Nick, that I'm a bit shocked to hear you say that Kevin Durant as the lead player on a team can't make just about anyone feel championship good the way that LeBron did. You know, when, when we knew he was going to lose in the finals, but he, what did he end up doing? He ended up shooting that one year. I don't know which year it was where he ended up shooting like 35%, but he was taking 40 shots, playing an irresponsible basketball for him. He he plays smart basketball. He was playing a reckless, inefficient basketball, but we all felt like he could do that. I didn't need to see it. Did you? Well, yeah. Well, with LeBron, no, because we had seen it in 07. Cause we had seen it from LeBron his first seven years in Cleveland. I, like, you can just say because he's an all-time great, he could do it. Kobe couldn't do this. Kobe couldn't. Kobe tried, he couldn't. Like, Kobe couldn't do it. As great as he was, the three years of Kobe's career, he didn't have a Hall of Famer alongside him. He missed the playoffs once and didn't get out of the first round of the two other years. He scored a bunch of points. Couldn't do, couldn't carry. I felt like Durant showed you it, it bounce here, bounce there. Could have carried them through the championship your argument like, so, just to be clear nick your argument is if i haven't seen it it can't be so no my argument is you, that if you haven't seen it you don't know it is so in sports you are you are just you are definitively saying you knew it but the reason but no the re I, what i know is his greatness nick what i know is that you're telling me that kevin durant because for 10 years he has never done had never been on a team where he's the only guy because he has never been on a team where he's the only time guy that he can't be an all time. Great. Who carries a team. He didn't do it with no. Westbrook. I mean, but they were I, great. Stugat, you know, they were great. What do you mean? He didn't do it. He got further than this. Dan, the last time with we Westbrook, he got further than here with Westbrook. The last time we saw him in a similar situation, he was up three, one against golden state. And they lost the next three. And then he left and went to golden state. So he didn't do it. I mean, he got to the finals, but, but he didn't what? do it. He got further than here. What do you mean? Didn't do what? He Dan, didn't that, get eliminated in the second round. I mean, what you saw in game five is something I've never seen from Kevin Durant before. I mean, we're all sitting here trying to Stugatz, tell you. you've seen it before. I, I've he, never he, seen he, him he, carry around Jeff so Green because, and Blake so Griffin. Stugatz, the reason you've never seen it is because he's never been on a team where there isn't a second guy. Right, but we saw it for a night, and he looked incredible, like the best Kevin Durant I've ever uh, seen. Stugatz, he's looked, I mean, I don't know what to tell you guys. Like, he's looked pretty great the entirety of his career under all circumstances. There's also a season where he didn't have a second guy. It was 2013-14 when Russell Westbrook got hurt ahead of the season. And he had he won the MVP that year and had multiple games where he's in the 40s. He, he carried Oklahoma City deep into the playoffs that year, which, considering he was without Russell Westbrook for most of it, it was really damn impressive. Hold on. That, that, but hold on. To be fair, Chris, that Russ... Russ did not miss that full season. Russ was there for the playoffs. Durant in Oklahoma City played one full series without Russell Westbrook. It was against Memphis after Patrick Beverly blew out, uh, it messed up Russell's knee in the first round against Houston. So I, I'm not sure what year you're talking about in, com in comparison, but Russ, KD only played one playoff series ever without Russ in OKC. It was the second round against Memphis. And he played one in Golden State without Steph. It was against the Spurs, but he also obviously had Clay. I I just it is it is very it is surprising to me, Dan, that like you having watched sports as long as you have are totally discounting the to me, you're discounting the mental aspect of expectations, pressure, and circumstances. Like, I think there is no argument to be made in the world that by an eye test, Peyton Manning is a far better quarterback than Tom Brady, except for the fact that one guy clearly upped his game repeatedly in the big spots, and the other guy had some of his worst moments in the biggest spots. That's not small sample size luck. That is some people rise to the occasion, some people don't. And for Durant, when there was the built-in, the built-in confidence of knowing if I don't have it tonight, my other guys can carry me. That changes the circumstances to allow you to achieve, at least to me. And not even to mention 
Just the pure, can a guy whose body is built like that play 48 minutes? That you can't say you knew. There's no way you knew he could play 48, and he did it off an Achilles. It's remarkable. Outside of Barry Bonds and perhaps Peyton Manning, I think you're going to have a hard time finding anyone who has historic kinds of excellence that you would James make Harden. make these claims about. Chris Paul. James Harden. James Chris Harden. Paul. I disagree on Chris Paul. Chris Paul's been great. But what about Harden, Dan? Tell me. Uh, Harden has not been good in the playoffs so far, and I believe that if I gave him a representative sample over the course of his prime, that would correct itself. I, I guys played like 140 playoff games. That's a pretty. That's like a, more than a. It's almost two seasons in the playoffs. I don't. I. I don't know. I mean, I. I okay. We just we fundamentally disagree on that. I. We can agree on Jessica's terrible squid take if you'd like to end this on a happy thing. <laughs> why, why is it terrible? Come on, Jessica. You had octopi right there. They can change color. They can ship. They can shape shift. They can do a lot of things. They're a, literal aliens. Pablo t- explained all this to you guys, and you went squid. Come okay, on. but like a squid and octopus, what's the difference, right? Like squid words okay, are all kind of well, the same thing. Okay, well, there you got, go. Like, the... They do that thing. <laughs> Can't argue that, Nick. That's what I Good luck, Nick. Good. <laughs> you know what? I've been checkmated. Jessica, Dan tried to checkmate me for 15 minutes. I kept hitting him with karate chops. What about Peyton Manning? What about Mike Trout? What about James Harden? You did it with the squid in 30 seconds. You got it. You got me. So you know that Mike Trout won't be good in the playoffs because you no, haven't Dan, seen it? Dan, that is, Dan, you are, you are arguing in a like I would almost say a political manner here, which is twisting my words. It's not what I'm saying. I am not saying I know something won't happen. I am saying I don't know that it will. I, I'm saying you seem to be certain Mike Trout, because he's one of the greatest regular season players we've ever seen, that that will carry over into the postseason. I'm saying I do not think sports work that way. I would like to see it to know it. I, would I bet on him being great in the postseason? I would. Would I, as I, am I as certain of it as I am with Mookie Betts? Of course not. Of course not. Why would I be? I've seen one. I haven't seen the other. You're arguing about the differences, though, between probabilities and certainties. And I would bet every time on the probabilities of historic greatness being historically great in moments that call for historic greatness. That's what, that's how these people get remembered that way. Nick, you're the guy out here who's arg- always arguing about, uh, uh, he's always arguing that LeBron is better than Jordan. And both of those right. guys got all of these questions before they proved it to you that they could actually do it. Both of the guys that are in the argument of greatest you've ever seen in that sport got the same questions until people saw it. And then we always back away from these guys when they do it. We always question the guy and then we can have the outliers, whether it's Chris Paul or James Harden or Peyton Manning. We can have the outliers, but the guys who are historically great are the ones who do it with excellence in the playoffs. And then they show you they've done it and they quiet all the critics. Yeah, which is why for Jordan, it's such a shame. He never showed he could do it without Scotty. I mean, one in nine in the playoffs. Am I right, Stu Gatz? Without Scotty. I'd like to see him win some without Scotty. Um, yeah, but the, also the guys, like, why is Akeem Olajuwon un? questionably greater than Patrick Ewing. Well, their regular season numbers, not that different. It's because one guy upped his game every postseason, and one guy tended to get a little bit worse. What made, why is Dwayne Wade one of the 25 greatest players in league history? He ever won an MVP? Nope. Was he ever win a scoring title? One, I think. So why is he, without a doubt, one of the greatest players we've ever seen because of his finals performances, particularly that first one. Like there is, there, there's, this is, it, why was Kawhi talked about as arguably the greatest player ever? Was it his regular season success? Nope. He had like two first team all NBAs is because when other guys got worse, he got better. That's a real thing in sports. We see it all the time. Look, what do you think, Dan? What do you think of Lamar Jackson? Are you are you fully confident that he's going to have 
what is going to be considered a great career? I or have, are there nervous? I, I have a hard time with him just in general because that it's a different math the way that he plays the sport. Like I, I him in general, he confuses me in some of the same ways that Ben Sim, Ben Simmons did last night. I don't understand what it is that I'm watching with Lamar Jackson because I'm I'm watching a hybrid quarterback who's passing accuracy isn't the it, it his passing strength is not what carries him all the time right but uh, is it also true that sports are a little bit different almost across the board maybe except for baseball in the postseason that not and i'm not talking about pressure i'm talking about how teams defend you schemes all of that like it's the same thing that we 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 have seen that okay if you can build an entire game plan around stopping this one guy, can he still kill you? And I think, I, I to me, that stuff's interesting. And I know all the LeBron folks on Twitter were dying for me. They would tweet me all weekend, oh, go after KD the way people would go after LeBron, 0 for 6 in overtime, airballed the game winner. And the answer to that is obviously the way people went after LeBron was illogical and you shouldn't do that to anybody. But also, I... Listen, I just I was listening to Gats this morning and I was like, I totally agree with that. I I learned, I knew Kevin Durant could was unbelievable at basketball, one of the greatest scorers ever. Him going to Golden State did not teach me anything. This series taught me something. So I to me that's fascinating. I find that's amazing cool. after that series the specifics. Not only did it teach you something, but the respect for Durant has been so universal and so consensus that the previous guy that you were doing that to Giannis, everyone ignores that he was kind of great in that game too. <laughs> like it's, it's being ignored that the, that the winner in that game that you've right. been questioning about his ability to do that in a game seven, that he was also great in that game while yeah. playing an absurd number of, but minutes. we're also telling you Katie also won in his own way. That's it. There is a difference, Dan, when everyone knows you have to score 50 for the team to have a chance, everyone is geared up to try and stop you. And you still go out there and you give him fifty. I mean, it's a big difference. But he won, and the, you can't fall back on Steph or Clay. He won the MVP the year that everyone was wondering whether or not he could do that.